Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Football Excellence Podcast po- powered by Podium. I am your host, Will Powell, and today we have a very special guest, Marquis Christian, who just finished up his fourth year in the NFL. This last season was with the Los Angeles Rams, where he had a great season, and obviously the team finished very well. Uh, also, but uh, we have Marquis on. We talk about a ton of different topics. Marquis uh, is from Houston. He then went on to play at Midwestern State, a Division II in Texas, and then he was drafted in the fifth round by the Arizona Cardinals. A lot of what we talk about today is how he went from not getting a lot of FBS offers or big school offers um, to progress at a Division II university to then get drafted to the NFL. So, you know, what it takes to go from a small school to being drafted in the NFL is a big topic of what's important to me and for us at Podium because we help hundreds of guys all the time who are from these smaller schools who, has, who have aspirations to make the NFL. And later in the conversation, we talk about Marquis' interest in fashion and how, how, how fashion is growing in the sports industry with people like Russell Westbrook um, and uh, David Beckham and, and, and now Marquis being quite the stylish dude himself, um, talking about a typical day in the life of an NFL player and, and how he's um, and, and the differences be- between going from college division two to the NFL and some of the, the, the difficulties and some of the, the, the things that he had to go through to transition to the next level. Talk about a lot of great things. You're going to love the episode. Marquis is the man. So without further ado, check out this podcast. So without further ado, check out this podcast with Marquis Christian. Marquis, welcome to the Football Excellence Podcast, man. How you doing? Good, man. How about yourself? Doing well, brother. Doing well. Well, happy to have you on today, man. Um, you know, a big, big part of what we want to talk about is coming from a, a smaller school, FCS, Division Two and lower, and making it to the NFL. And, you know, you are the perfect, perfect example of that. Coming from Mid- Midwestern State, balling out, winning the Cliff Harris Award, the Defensive Player of the Year for small schools, and then getting drafted to the – was it the Cardinals initially? For sure. For sure. Yeah, to the – to the Cardinals and then, you know, playing for a couple of teams. But, um, you know, you were the underdog from high school to college. Why do you think that you didn't get some of the offers that you deserved even getting into college? Um, I think it was – I mean, I always had the talent and the skill. You know, I was always one of the best players on the field. I think it was just exposure, you know, uh, going to an inner city school for the first three years, playing there. The exposure just wasn't there, and uh, it's not. It's not like I was attending camps and things like that, which mm-hmm. a lot of kids do attend camps. And you know, it's different now with like <clears throat> the seven or seven teams and and all that. So the coaching was a little different too. So um, it wasn't the best coaching, I would say, position wise, like real in depth. You know what I mean? So a lot mm-hmm. of stuff. You know, a lot of times just playing off of. Uh, what I knew and my athleticism and my talent. So I feel like once I got refined, like my last year, um, my senior year in high school, when I got refined, it kind of helped me going into college, and that's why I was able to play so early. And, um, and they said at, at Midwestern State, you know what I mean? I, if I felt like I had that coaching earlier, I would have – in that exposure, I would have definitely been somewhere else. But yeah. – most definitely. And, and I couldn't agree with you more on that standpoint. I felt like I was undercoached in high school and, and even part, some of the time in college. And it's crazy how much you realize you don't realize what a good coach means until you have a great coach. Right. You know what I'm That's saying? True. Yeah. Yeah. I can and, definitely agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so when you got to Midwestern, did you have some, some sort of a chip on your shoulder? I mean, what were your goals when you got there because you didn't get any of those big FBS offers? I mean, it was always just one goal, and I was just getting out and getting to the NFL. I just didn't know how, you mm-hmm. know. I mean, I just took it one day at a time, really. I never really just set a season ago. I was just trying to get on the field. Like, you know what I mean? I thought, mm-hmm. you know, you come in, it's like it's, it's, it's JUCO transfers coming in, playing the same position. It's like six guys playing safety. It's like, damn, like. Am I going to be able to play? Like, you know what I mean? It's just, mm-hmm. you know, you just take it one day at a time and you learn the system and work work out, you work hard, and then you just be on the field and you just play football and then it just goes from there. 
Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Well, and it takes some time to build that confidence, though, because like you said, a lot of these D2 FCS schools are bringing in a bunch of JUCO guys. And it's like that can be intimidating at times. You're like, all right, this dude is coming from a JUCO, balled out, had big offers. And now he's coming in here to try to take my spot. Like, coach, why'd you bring him in? You know what I mean? 100%. 100%. But, uh, it's, it's, um, but like football is just is, – it's more than just, you know, talent. You know, you got to – you got to be able to be coachable, know the playbook, play under pressure, you know what I mean? It's just you got you to gotta be able to put all those things um, into one, you know what I mean? So, guys, there's a lot of guys that were talented that couldn't, you know, put it together, put it all together, and I could. So, that definitely uh, definitely put me above the, a step above the rest for sure. Well, and at what point during your career at Midwestern State did you know that you had a good shot at making the NFL? Was it after your junior season? You know, was it, you know, what, what did that look like? When did you start getting interest? It was definitely after my junior season. Um, was it, yeah, it was after my junior year. Went into my senior year, I was getting, uh, like that summer, I was getting contacted by agents. I had like a first, my one of my agents called me. I forgot how he contacted me. It might have been Facebook or Instagram or something like that, but Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had the first agent contact me, and then later on that summer, my agent that I'm currently with now contacted me, and um, yeah, they 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 told me I had a a draftable grade, a mid round grade, mid to late round grade, and you know they just started building these relationships, and you know what I mean. Uh, Yeah, that's when I that's when I that's when I knew you know I had a chance, especially starting the starting the camp senior year because Mm -hmm. my position coach was the NFL liaison. Okay. So, you know, he talked to the scouts that came in and the first day uh, of camp, you know, they were just rolling in. And then the first day I talked to, like, two or three teams. And after that, I man, it was just every day. I talked to a team leader every day. Wow. 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 And then you went around and, and won the Cliff Harris Award, the Defensive Player of the Year for the small schools. I mean, did you – did you was that ever a goal of yours? Or did you even, like, know what that was going into your senior year? Or how did that happen? I had no idea what that even was. I didn't know it was a thing. I was uh, I was actually in Houston when I found out. I was in Houston. I was, I was in bed, just laying down, you know, going through the process. Like, when I was back home training and stuff. And I was just going through the process. And um, got a call from my coach. And, uh, you know, he just called me with the, with the news. I'm like, damn, that's a shocker. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then yeah. literally like an hour later, I got, the, I got the news about the NFLPA All-Star game. So. Wow. It was, uh, yeah, it was a good day. That was a good day for sure. That's for sure. And, and how, w- w- how beneficial was the NFL PA bowl game to you getting in front of more scouts? And, you know, we, we have a bowl game at Podium. Um, the NFL PA is up there with the, with the East West Shrine and up there with the Reese Senior Bowl. Um, and we feel like we're next behind those. But how was it getting in front of those scouts and, and being able to see them and them see you move? I mean, that's what got me drafted. Yep. You know what I mean? One of the scouts <clears throat> fell, in, and fell in love with me, which was Adrian Wilson, mm-hmm. who was a new, like a newer scout for the, for the Arizona Cardinals, saying as he just uh, stopped playing probably like two or three years before that. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, man, we, I think he, he just fell in love with me from drills and inside run drills and making play on the ball and just full run drills. And we had several means, and he was just like, man, like, you know, he was like, it's, it's, I, I got to get you to Arizona. Like, we're going to make sure. I'm going to make sure. Mm. You know what I mean? And he, you know, being, at, being as he was in the ring of honor, well, now he is, he had like okay. a big influence. You know what I mean? Especially being an actual player, playing a position. So, you know, his, his word to the team, you know, it meant, I guess I meant a lot, especially, you know, when he came to me. <laughs> No doubt. That's a blessing. That's all it takes is one guy, right? It takes one guy to it's see one, you like you. It's, it's so crazy. And, and so, you know, as you, you know, you got, you got drafted and then you got into Cardinals. I mean, what was it like getting into your first fall camp? What, what was the biggest differences between the NFL and college football, the speed, the professionalism? I mean, everything. It was just as professionalism, the speed too. But I mean, um, you don't really know the speed until you get in the game. So, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just a little bit more precise. Uh, a little bit more demanding, you know what I mean? But, I mean, that's about it. Um, more mental for sure. I mean, 
it, it's it's a toss up. Some some defensive playbooks, and I mean, because I mean, it's defense. I mean, you know, you can't really make up any too many new defenses. You know what I mean? It's cover four, mm-hmm. cover two, cover three, four, cover six, cover. Every defensive coach has a different tweak. So, but no, some coaches are more complex, and some coaches are more uh, simple when it comes to scheme and play calling. So, that's just a thing, you know. Getting that and learning the ter- really the terminology, that's a big thing too, you know, for checks and and calls and things like that. Especially being the safety, you know what I mean. Communicating, mm-hmm. uh, being a DB period. So just the terminology, uh, the professionalism, uh, taking care of your body for sure, and uh, the speed. Yeah, and and who are some of the you know your your biggest mentors you know with the, with the several teams that you played for in the NFL? I mean, guys that you went into camp with during the season, and you're looking up to them, watching what they're doing, seeing how they move on and off the field. Who are those guys for you? Uh, definitely like Tyron Matthew, Patrick Peterson, Tony Jefferson, uh, DJ Swanger. Early on, mm-hmm. which is like that's that's the- a. Crazy room. That's like that room is like worth two hundred million dollars. You know what I mean? Man, that's some of the best DBs in the past decade. Yeah, for sure. It's like you know, I was in the room with those guys early, and then when I got to LA, I was like, you know, it was a real, really young room, but we did have a uh, um, Trumay Johnson who was like high, one of the highest paid corners ever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He was a real student of the game. Uh, I, I watched him, and. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, being with the Rams, you know, you got Aaron Donald. Mm-hmm. Um, my bro, Michael Brockers, who I went to Chavez with early on in high school. When I was a, a freshman and he was a senior, and we had the chance to play on the same NFL team. So It's wild. Uh, yeah, Akeem Tlaib, Eric Weddle. You know, legendary, like Hall of Fame guys, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Well, and, you know, in some of those top DB guys, I mean, what set them apart? Was it, you know, was it their athletic ability? Was it their commitment to learning the game? I mean, what did you see in them that made them great? Uh, well, it depends. You know, some guys aren't the most athletic, and some guys are just students of the game, and some guys are real good – studious, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. can can see the field uh really well. Uh some guys are just great leaders and lead by lead by example. You know what I mean? So it's all it's all depends, you know, every person in the field is different. So, you know, like some guys have both. A keep to leave, you know, in Hall of Fame corner. Uh second in I think he's number two in in the NFL ever and pick sixes mm. behind Rod Wilson. But yeah, he just had, he got a freak freak athlete, and he just he knows how to study film well. He knows how to uh, read formations. He knows how to read route patterns. You know what I'm saying? He's a mm-hmm. he's he's savvy and he's super athletic. You know what I mean? And then Eric Weddle, who is definitely not the fastest. You know what I mean? All the quickest, <laughs> mm-hmm. but he's just so smart, man. He knows what the D line is doing. You know what gap to be in. You know what gap to hop in. He t- you know what I mean? He just he literally a coach. I've never seen nobody know what's coming like him. Like. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. But he's a really he's really good at film study too. Like, like unreal. I can imagine. I can't even, I can't even start to explain really. Well, and that's his longevity too, right? I mean, playing in the league for ten plus years and just growing and growing and growing, and you know, being that role player, like you said, not the most athletic dude, but doing the other intangibles that make him great. You know, being yeah. in the right place, always making sure he's getting the tackle. I mean, that's how you secure that paycheck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very, he's a very secure tackler. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He definitely, yeah. Well, and, like, what about coaches? I mean, who – what was it like playing for Sean McVay and, and his coaching staff, young staff? Um, I mean, seemed to be players coaches. What was your experience with them? Oh, yeah, no, it was, it was fire. You know, it was, it was super fun. Like, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a great culture, winning culture, and it was, a, it was laid back. You know, they treated us like men. You know what I mean? We, you know, mm-hmm. it wasn't, it, it was never uptight. You know what I mean? Some teams are very strict. It, it was never like that there. You know what I mean? Maybe it, it has something to do with the winning, but from the beginning, you can just sense it was just creating a new winning culture after Jeff Fisher had uh, left and got fired. And, you know what I mean? Uh, treating us with respect and allowing us to be men and, and letting us take care of things on the field. So it was, it was love. It was love. That's amazing. That's amazing. And, you know, as far as like the structure of the day during the season, I mean, 
are you guys going 10 hour days or are you guys only going five hour days? I mean, what does that look like? And, and how are you staying, how are you balancing life and staying healthy throughout all that? During the season? Yeah. Uh, days are probably like nine, eight hours. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. Staying out there and looking at film 10 hours, probably from eight to seven or seven to seven. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Shit like that. Um, but I mean, it's uh, it, it just becomes, it's a, it just becomes a job, you know. It's just, it's regular, yeah. you know. You get up, you know. You get get in, get into work, take a shower, you know what I mean. Get some mm-hmm. coffee, eat breakfast, you know. You got meetings, and you know you're putting in game plans, and you know, and you you got these little breaks in between, and you got breaks in between. You might you might take a nap, or you might touch up on the playbook or some film. You might go see the trainers and. And get some maintenance work. You might hop in the sauna, hop in the hot tub. You know what I mean. You might go in the red room and just get a stretch or a roll out. You know what I mean. Just you might call a family member. Just you know what I mean. You might be in the training room, just having fun with the team. It's just it's I don't know. It's so much because it's always time. It's like I always make time for yourself. You know what I mean. It's never just something, 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 mm-hmm. something all day. It's always a uh, some time for yourself. You know what I mean. It's just up to you what you do with it. So I mean. In those times, you know, you take care of yourself. And then, obviously, after a game, Monday is never a full day. You know, you come in for four hours, maybe from 8 to 12. You know, you come in, watch some film, um, get a little recovery lift in, go about your day. And then Tuesday, you're off. So, you got all Monday afternoon, all Tuesday, you're off. You know what I mean? Nice. Take care of your body. Friday is a fast day, fast Friday you get in. You get in at 7 or 8 and you're going in 1 o'clock. You know what I mean? So you got Friday afternoon, all Friday, do your thing. Saturday is walk through. Then you got all that afternoon. You know what I mean? So it's, it's plenty of time. It's, it's plenty of time. Yeah. Well, that's nice, though. I mean, it's nice that you can use that extra time to, you know, do whatever you want. Because you can't just be going from back to back to back to back. Otherwise, you're going to get burnt out so quickly. And with – with, five months of the season like there's no way anyone can sustain that so i mean that's good to hear that you get some sort of break to either meditate or call people or eat or you know whatever no doubt. um well and so what about the off season i mean right now you're in free agency you know you're training the draft just got over with so i'm sure you're waiting uh you know, to see where guys are getting signed and in that process you know what is your training like now and how do you pre- prepare yourself for when you do get that call again uh, that's the same thing I've been doing every off season. Just, I mean, staying on top of things. Mainly, uh, I start in the early, earlier in the off season, like February, March, in the weight room. Mm-hmm. Um, then you know later, you don't want to burn out too early. Later on, and you start slowly hitting the field and getting in the cleats. And um, around this time, I'm 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 not in the weight room as much. It's more movement, weight training. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not for bulk. And um, now some new I'm doing. I'm just making sure I'm in shape, conditioning. Since we haven't had um, OTAs or mini camps, so I'm just um, getting up, running, running a lot now, and um, just on the field doing different things in the sand pit, on the hill, uh, position work. Mainly that's all. Just touching up on the on the on the small things on the field, and you know, just getting my my wind up, my endurance, and my and my and my um, conditioning. Mainly is my focus right now. So, excellent, 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 excellent. Well, and and so, you know, Marquis, what are some of your favorite lessons or quotes or mottos that you've been taught from a coach or from a player in football that kind of defines what you think about the sport and what it's done for you? Hmm. Man, I, I want to think of this quote because Eric Weddle had a lot of good quotes, man. Mm. I'm trying to think of a specific, specific quote he used to have. It's basically about how um, every player has their role, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. you know, you can't do another role if you're not you – know, damn, what was the quote? It was, it was a great quote, man. I wish I – it's in a, it's in the tip of my tongue. I just cannot dig it out, man. But no worries. I mean, but it's um, I, to to be specific, I can't really be too specific on the quote. I mean, it's been so many, you know, uh, mm-hmm. hundreds of them, man. Sometimes they, sometimes they stick. Sometimes they go through one end, not the other. But 
Well, even then, I mean, uh, what, what? Rip mainly, mainly the best quote I heard is probably from Marshawn Lynch, uh-huh. and it happened recently. And when he was just telling, telling, telling all the young athletes, you know what I'm saying, like, take care of your body, you know what I'm saying, take care of your chicken, you feel me? And then it take care of you, and then when when it's over, you know what I'm saying, you'll be able to to have fun and and and, and relax and take care of your family, you know what I mean, and mm-hmm. take care of your mental. So he was like, take care of your mental, take care of your, take care of your body, you know what I'm saying, take care of your chicken, you know what I'm saying, take care of your money. Mm. You feel me? And that's really, that's really the best quote I have probably heard besides all the, you know what I mean, study and blah, 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 because really at the end, that's really all that matters, you know what I mean? Mental mm. health, physical being, you know what I mean, the money we get now at a young age, being able to um, keep that going and, and keep it as long as we can and and, and Make the most out of it. You know what I mean? Most definitely. Longevity for sure. Financial. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and so along those lines, I mean, you know, you, you, you spent a lot of time in LA with the, the Rams and you started getting more into fashion over the years. I mean, you're a fashionable dude. You're all over IG. You were in Paris for fashion week, I believe. For, her, for, her, for sure. That's amazing, man. So yeah. talk about your love for passion and how that's, you know, completely something outside of football that you're trying to grow and mature in. Yeah, man, it's just, you know, when you, it's, it's something that's always been there, of course, uh, credit to my mom and my older brother, for sure, big influence on me. Uh, it was always there, it's just, I was so focused on one goal, which was making it to the NFL, so that got kind of put on the back burner, and plus I didn't have, you know, I didn't have money, yeah. you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like that to, you know, find my own wardrobe, whatever, so once I was able to get to get to where I was going, which is the NFL, I was able to you know, you know, once you get a career, you're able to set out and, and touch and reach different, you know, what I mean? different different hobbies and and and, and tap into them. Mm-hmm. So especially when I got to LA, being how diverse and open LA is, I was really able to start seeing more than I ever seen. Had more access to things I've seen, just um, seeing new things and meeting new people as well, and um, just learning more and more about it. Educating myself as well, reading up on it and. And, and looking at the history and, and you know, just evolving my style every year. You know what I mean? Uh, my mm-hmm. style is, I've always had it, but it's just evolved to every year into to more me. You know what I mean? And now it's, it's me. It's my identity outside of football. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. Someone doesn't know me for football, which is perfectly okay. You know what I mean? Then yeah. They probably, you know what I mean? They probably know, at least they know, like, oh, it's a fashionable guy. You know what I mean? A, a well-dressed guy. And I'm, you know what I mean? I, I appreciate that. So Definitely. Well, I can attest to that. You've got a swaggy wardrobe. You're not yeah. afraid to take risks, which I think is so important sure. in style. Sure. And, I mean, who, who out there right now in the sports game do you think is the best, outside of yourself, who is the best-dressed athlete today in all sports? In all the sports? Yeah. Or throw out a couple names if you can't pick one. Um, my man, my man, Stefan Diggs. Steph, was with okay. The but, yeah, with Buffalo now, Steph is, uh, Steph get busy. Uh, Russell Westbrook for sure gets busy. I was going to say Russell. Yeah, yeah. yeah Russell is this thing. Um, man, who else? Um, David Beckham. David Beckham is super fresh. <laughs> sure, David Beckham definitely has a, a, a great sense of style. Mm. Um, what's another athlete? Um, let's think basketball-wise. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't want to leave nobody out. Uh, I'm a man. My man's in uh, Denver, who he's in Philly now. My man's uh, Will Parks, mm-hmm. you know I mean? close friend of mine. He, he 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 get busy too, man. He do his thing. You okay. feel me? Um, well, and yeah, do you man, see that's, 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 that's the name of few. Okay. Well, do you see you know a, a more of a trend of athletes becoming models, athletes getting more into the fashion game, or is it something that's already been happening for a long time? Oh! Oh! Shit. Oh! 
<laughs> I drop my food everywhere, but um, not necessarily. No. That sucks. Not necessarily uh, models, but definitely more into the fashion. But that's just the climate of the world we live in right now, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with Instagram and, and social media and things being more accessible, uh, like fashion. So, right. you know, it's the era of fast fashion. So, I mean, uh, definitely more athletes are 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 getting into it. You know, what I mean, um. It just comes with the with the times at this right. point. Right, 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 right. Well, and well, well, Marquis, just to just to finish up, I mean, what is your advice, you know, to to small school athletes who didn't get any FBS scholarships, who are at a D two grinding, have some potential? I mean, what's your advice to those guys on you know creating their best opportunity to, to be in the NFL and excel in the NFL like you? Um, it's really just maximizing every opportunity and. And putting that extra into it, because obviously we already have disadvantages, but it's just working on your strengthening your weaknesses and um, making your strengths stronger, maximizing your opportunities, um, being a student of the game, and yeah, being a student of the game and just um, and, and taking taking the taking advantage of every opportunity and and being coachable and taking it one day at a time. That's great advice. Well, man, we appreciate it, Marquis. Look forward to seeing you get signed here shortly. And uh, as always, it's a pleasure, brother. Always, brother. I appreciate it. All right, man. Will you take care? That's another episode of the Football Excellence Podcast. Take care, guys.